Hello everyone. Welcome to Mate Non Toxic. So today I'm going to talk about cervical spondylosis, a topic which I myself am very skeptical about. I would say to read, to understand, but it's actually very simple. That I found out after reading it. So I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible and hope you enjoy it. So first things first. What is cervical spondylosis? So it is a degenerative condition. Right? And this degenerative condition affects the cervical spine. So now why is there a degeneration? So it's simple simply because of age often often because of age due to the wear and tear on your spinal disc so the word cervical spondylosis tells you very clear right it affects the cervical region of the spine so that's what it's mentioning here the location is your cervical intervertebral joint commonly the lower three is affected so if you can see the intervertebral disc right that is what is commonly affected so as I told you risk factors most commonly is age and almost all individuals above the age of 50 suffer from cervical spondylosis also other than that in any occupation right where the neck is often in uh, one position right uh, especially white collar jobs where you're sitting in front of the uh, computer or laptop right 24 7 then that's going to happen also if you do a lot of reading a lot of writing then you might suffer from this problem so writers be careful okay and by the way the one of the reasons i took uh, uh, decided to read this up is because one of my uh, writer friend gave me symptoms similar to this so now the question is what's the symptoms before moving towards the symptoms let's just see the pathology a little bit so the degeneration of your intervertebral disc as you can see in the picture here the one at the most bottom shows the disc degeneration they will result in formation of osteophyte those things jutting out from the bone right and there would be decreased disc space so it's very clear in this picture look at the top most that is your normal disc look at the disc space look at the one below look at the disc space so what can happen is this osteophyte osteophytes can press on either your nerve roots or they can press on all directly on the spinal cord so if they press on the spinal cord then they'll give you cord compression syndromes and if it's uh, press on your nerve root they will give rise to radicular pain in the upper limb right so as I was saying he complained of pain and stiffness right which was intermittent and it was around the forearm and hence okay so it's very common yeah it's a very common presenting symptom where you have got uh, pain and stiffness radiating from the shoulder all the way down to the outer spec of the forearm and hand but again this is not the only cause of such pain so do get it checked yeah and sometimes you also get episodes of giddiness okay so whatever the clinical features are they tend to go into remission spontaneously they tend to exacerbate spontaneously okay then on clinical examination so get the patient to do neck movements and you'll realize that there is limit limitation in neck movement 
at the same time if you look there would be loss of normal cervical curvature okay normal cervical curvature is called the cervical lordosis that normal cervical curvature is lost and when you press over it there is tenderness okay on the upper limb you might get signs of nerve root compression by the osteophytes obviously in the lower limb there will be signs of early cord compression ok not to get into the details of it so much radiologically obviously you will see that intervertebral disc space nar narrowing as sh is seen by the uh, arrow here you will also observe sometimes osteophytes again the arrow shows both of that in decrease intervertebral space and osteophytes okay that can be either anteriorly or posteriorly right now this is what i want you to think about or note importantly so there are other causes of neck pain other than cervical spondylosis so very often which is also a, quite a common problem these days cervical disc prolapse or it could be infections or it could be tumors upper limb pain the similar type of upper limb pain is often seen also in couple tunnel syndrome and cervical lip rip okay so note that so how do you treat this patient so it's very simple the idea here is you want it to resolve by itself because it's just an inflammation of the soft tissue so you want it to resolve and you want to prevent further attacks so how can you help in res resolving the inflammation is to make sure that the patient uh, maintains a good neck posture right never keep the neck in a uh, position uh, that you know can give it rise to strain and uh, also not in one position right and at night do use a thin pillow you know don't strain that region somewhere you want to maintain the curve neck muscle exercises okay so obviously if you've got during an acute exacerbation you can't just maintain the neck posture the patient would has come with a lot of pain so you have to manage that acute exacerbation with analgesics okay if there are episodes of giddiness okay then antimatics hot fomentation is a good thing you can do it rest to the neck using cervical collars and traction to the neck and if there is spinal cord compression by osteophytes then surgical decompression is the only option okay so very simply just to recap I'm going from the top so it's a degenerative condition of the cervical spine we understood that the word itself tells you cervical spondylosis so that means it affects the cervical intervertebral joint problems or risk factors that gives rise to the disease age and neck in a single position for a very long time because of this degeneration of the intervertebral disc, disc space decreases formation of peripheral osteophytes. These osteophytes can press on your nerve root and your spinal cord. If it press on nerve root, radicular pain in upper limb. If it press on spinal cord, signs of cord compression, pain and stiffness, which is initially intermittent, later persistent with radiating pains to the shoulder and outer aspects of the forearm and hand with spontaneous remission and exacerbation in the neck there is limitation in the neck movement on clinical examination with a loss of normal cervical lordosis and tenderness in the lower cervical spine region radiological findings on an x-ray ap lateral you will see a decrease in intervertebral disc space and osteophytes at the vertebral margins either anteriorly or posteriorly 
DD other causes of neck pain importantly is cervical disc prolapse could cause also neck pain also infection and tumor other causes of upper limb pain are so uh, couple tunnel syndrome and cervical limb treatment is to advise proper neck posture and neck muscle exercises during an episode of acute ex acute exacerbation give analgesics antiemetics uh, do a hot fermentation rest to the neck and cervical collar and if the spinal cord compression by osteophytes surgical decompression hope you enjoy the video thank you for watching if you liked it do like it if you liked it please do subscribe and do watch other videos and stay tuned to the page thank you